Yeah, but we out here at ringside now, so so ringside was our club. You know, that's the only place where we can get in without having to worry about getting carded for ID where they serve liquor. He looked out for everybody. But this is where we should shoot all the comedy corners. You know, Screw have put together this comedy thing every Thursday, every Friday, every week. You know, to keep cats out of trouble, just keep ha have something fun for us to do. It's a sad place because this is where uh, my brother Screw got shot. It just so happened that he died saving somebody else. Like that bullet wasn't meant for him. You know, he was always that type of person. You see somebody in trouble, he would lend a hand and try to help. He would never like see somebody hurt or see somebody in a bad situation and he not step in to help. He just, it was, he wasn't built like that. You know, he was probably the most genuine. Anybody that know him would tell you he was that kind of guy. And they always say the good die young. He was definitely one of the good. What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers I are providing. Today we back with another profile piece. This one is on Screw. In this video, we're going to talk about his early years coming up in New Jersey. Then we'll speak about his ups and downs in the streets, which led to some jail time throughout the years. After that, we will focus on his connection to the music industry, where he was making some power moves and working with big artists, before finally breaking down the situation that would end up taking his life. Robert Screw Montanez was born in Brooklyn, but grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. Living there as a youngster would be cool for Screw as New York City was just a short drive or train ride away from Jersey City. Screw would have a cool childhood and ended up graduating from Dickinson High School in Jersey City before taking to the streets a bit as the years went by. At the age of 21, Screw went to jail on manslaughter charges after being convicted of being responsible for the death of Jose Joker Martinez who was shot in a Baldwin Avenue Jersey City doorway in September of 1995. Screw would do his time and be released in March of 1998 free to return to Jersey City. But this time around, Screw had bigger plans than just running the streets. His new goal was to get into the music and entertainment industry as the rap game looked like the new way to get rich in America. In the late 90s, early 2000s, Screw would start a movement called Capital B that over time turned into Block Royal Entertainment. The home base for Block Royal was Jersey City. Although they had relationships to other parts of Jersey and all over New York City, Screw himself would start working with a bunch of different rappers in an attempt to get in the game. He would also throw a bunch of different events like parties and comedy shows. The now famous singer Akon was one of the artists that Screw worked with early on. The two met each other during their years coming up in Jersey City and Akon at the time kind of looked up to Screw as Screw was respected in the streets and pretty well off financially. Once things started to take off for Akon musically, Screw would be brought into the fold by the singer to help with his everyday navigation through the music industry. Screw would act like a manager slash protector for Akon, being that Screw was known to hold it down, even when the odds were stacked against him, and Akon knew he needed someone like that in his corner. They would frequent a place called Ringside, which was a sports bar on Tonnelly Avenue in Jersey City. Ringside had his own rich history due to his popular owner Mario and his relationship with former boxing champion Mike Tyson, who according to some, used to train at ringside in between fights. Ringside would be a big part of Screw's story as this was a spot where he would end up being shot and killed in December 2004. The story around that situation according to reports was that Screw, who threw a weekly comedy show at ringside, was out there doing his thing, bringing some entertainment to his community when somebody tried to rob Queen's rapper Capone from the group CNN for his chain. Screw seeing what was going on, ran out to the parking lot area to help Capone. He allegedly got into some type of scuffle with the robber and was shot twice in the chest. Another person would also be shot in the leg while the rapper Capone was able to make it out the situation unharmed. Screw was taken to Jersey City Medical Center for emergency surgery. A bunch of family and friends including rappers Nori and Fat Joe would rush to Screw's bedside and show of support. Screw would make it out of surgery but sadly ended up dying while in the intensive care unit. Screw was just 31 years old at the time of his death. Six years later in 2010, a Newark man by the name of Al Malik Ward was arrested and charged with the murder of Screw after years of no arrest. Although after doing some research he couldn't have gotten too much time if convicted of anything in that case because in October 2018 he made headlines again for allegedly shooting someone in Newark, New Jersey. But yo, was What's the Numbers TV? That was a quick profile piece on Robert Tito Martinez, better known as Screw from Block Royal. Now, Akon was around that day that Screw got shot according to an interview he did but 
he wasn't there when it actually took place. Like he was hanging out with Capone. Capone from CNN was actually there with Akon, you know, building with him in the hopes to maybe get a feature as Akon was like, his star was rising at the time. He was one of the hottest up and coming artists in the game. So Capone's around him trying to get a feature. That's what Akon said in the interview. But when the actual, you know, altercation took place, Akon wasn't there. He said he was in a cab driving to the hotel or something, heading to a show or something like that. Now, people say that, you know, Screw was fearless. Like, he was a fearless individual. So that's why he jumped in the way of, uh, you know, trying to help um, CNN as, C as CNN Capone. As Capone was there with them. So that he felt like a disrespect. And he was a fearless individual. So he just felt like he was doing what he felt was right as far as, like, helping CNN, helping Capone in the situation. And then the whole, you know, he, him losing his life took place. Now, allegedly the murder of Screw started some beef in Jersey. I'm not sure, but allegedly, you know, different neighborhoods being at Screw's from Jersey City. The man that killed them, allegedly from Newark or whatever. But they said some little beef in the street started. Even though Block Royal had people all over Jersey. You know, I don't know for sure how true that is. But according to some people, they're trying to say the death of Screw definitely has some, you know, kickback in the streets as far as retaliation or, you know, back and forth going on. You know, now Block Royal had a lot of artists and affiliates. You know, down the year, you had Joe LT's down with them, Akon. You had It's Him, the Black Hispanic. A bunch of DJs rocked with Block Royal. I remember being uptown in Dykeman back in the day, you know, early 2000s. And they used to always shout Block Royal out to the point where I thought Block Royal was like a Dykeman thing. Like, a, you know, because I used to be at the games early 2000s, watching the games. And they used to always rep some um, shout out Block Royal. They'd be out there with the beach chairs on the course. I always thought that was a Dykeman thing, but come to find out, it's a Jersey City thing, a Jersey thing. So shout out to them. You understand? Now, from what we know, I don't know. I think the dude might have got convicted, but he ain't get too much time. I, I seen a comment. Somebody say that about Amelie Ward got some type of conviction in the case, or, but he didn't do that much time. So I'm not sure if the case got dropped. He did get convicted, but we know for sure that in 2018, after being arrested in 2010, he was wanted again for another shooting. So with that being said, man, that's the profile piece on Block Royal. Screw, real name, Robert Tito Martinez. And, um, you know, he's a Jersey City legend. You got to call it what it is what it is. His name rang on for years. You know, Block Royal kept his name alive. They was doing, a, they branched out to different states, different countries even. And, you know, Screw was the man that put it all together initially. So, rest, big rest in peace to him. Condolences to his family. And, you know, what's number CV, man? We like shining light on people that not too many um, people touched on already. So, that's what we do at What's Number CV. So, if you fuck with what we're doing, you like what we're doing, you appreciate what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. We're about to hit 90,000 subscribers. Subscribe to the Clips channel. Follow What's Number CV on Instagram. Follow my partner, Batty Bills, on Instagram. You got any business, What's Number CV at Yahoo.com. And we back before you know it, man. We out of here. Peace.